good morning it is vlogtober 8th i think um and i've got all my gear on because i'm about to go outside um and assess wind damage storm barra came through last night we barely felt it because the direction of wind was east southeast and we're pretty sheltered in the house from that direction if it's westerly it's usually very very noisy in the house so storm uh, storm arwen that came through last week was really noisy and very scary and my husband had to go out at one point in it to put rocks on the front edge of the workshop roof because the plywood that it's made or the, the what are they called the facing boards it'll come back to me had rotted and come off in the wind and the edges of the plywood it, the layers were kind of starting to separate so you'd have to put heavy rocks all along well, i've looked out this morning and we didn't get we got, we came off pretty well com, compared to the rest of scotland and the north of england and i believe cornwall area as well um <clears throat> considering we usually get really hammered by the wind and we did have 70 something mile an hour winds up here during storm arwen but we came off not so bad really considering how bad they had it south and um same with yesterday i think we only had sort of 50 mile an hour gusts maybe here um but i've looked out the front window this morning and i think the felt is coming off of the workshop roof so my husband's not going to be too happy with that so i'm about to head out i'm going to let the chickens out early whilst i'm out there um since i'm going to be out anyway and uh just check for any other damage it's getting light but it's not completely light i'll try and show you but the camera generally tries to um make up for the lack of light but i will tone down the brightness or the lightness on the camera so you can see what it's like out there i'm looking out the front door and you can just see let me get my finger in shot. Oh, my finger looks big because I've zoomed in. You can just see the felt lifting on the roof. So I'm about to go out. I will check it and I will check the rest of the property for damage as well. We don't usually get strong uh, east south easterlies. It's an unusual direction for us. So I'm not sure whether anything might have been damaged that we haven't accounted for when we normally get the strong westerly uh, storms. So the UK is in a, oh, what do you call it, the, in, we have a biohazard uh, prevention order, something like that anyway, what basically means that if you have chickens, ducks, turkeys, anything like that, you have to keep them undercover at the moment because there have been cases in the UK of the bad strain of bird flu. So owners have had to, both small owners and larger owners, Small owners of smaller flocks, larger flocks, have to keep their flocks under cover. So this winter, like last winter, we have brought them into the large greenhouse because John made this last uh, 2020 while he was furloughed during the first lockdown. So normally this is full of vegetables, but in the winter it's not. And uh, yeah, I thought I'd show you this very basic setup we've had to do in here for our flock kind of just basically random crap that you keep in the greenhouse and it's gathered basically over the winter so we've got like cuttings and John's brought these fuchsias in we have some lupins that weren't doing very well in the garden because of slugs a load of these socking boards that John brought in because he didn't want them to get wet outside in all weathers and all these random tools and such like our chickens and ducks and we've separated this into two halves so that they don't fight because we have two cockerels we have Sid just down there with the little with his red comb and in this half we have Cornelius that gentleman over there and we also have our ducks in this side and that duck in front of Cornelius is Lucky Duck who thinks he's a chicken because he was hatched out with chickens and we have some of our hens in here we have who have we got over here a grey lady over there she's lavender she's a lavender aracana and we're just kind of doing a deep bed method which i'm not the biggest fan of but will work for over the the next couple of months where 
you put straw or hay in and as that becomes dirty with chicken muck and stuff you add another layer down and they can work it into the soil and then in the spring we can add more compost and dig it all in and it'll fertilize it so all their muck goes into the soil they will also eat all of the slugs and bugs and grubs that's in here for so that they don't eat our plants which they did a little badly this year so yes so we have them separate out because cornelius is blind in one eye and he will get picked on by sid it's okay when they're outside because they have a big outdoor run but unfortunately not in here so john has just temporarily rigged up some chicken wire to separate them out and uh yeah, it's very basic, but it will do the job until they're allowed back outside again. I also forgot to mention whilst I was outside that in the duck side, it also has a small ornamental pond. So the type you would have in a garden. It's small, it's basic. Um, we've kind of just recessed it into the soil so that the ducks have somewhere to kind of splash about and get the water out all over their bodies. It has to be refilled pretty much every day because they splash it everywhere. Um, but like it says, it, we've kind of limited on what we can do here um, and our outdoor run is huge there's no way you could cover and close the entire area um, so we are working with what we've got so yes they have a small pond and in the duck side they have like a bucket of water they can kind of dunk their heads in because they like to dunk their heads to keep themselves clean and in the chicken side they've got the water hopper because we only have one of them I need to get a second one of those but they have got the bucket in the other side that was a bit waffly I do apologize so I'm just going to get myself sorted out and uh, have a hot drink I think because I really need one my other fabric order arrived this afternoon so I thought I'd share what I ordered if I can remember what it is I ordered so let me just get myself settled okay so I ordered some flannel and I ordered some cottons and I've ordered a mystery bundle as well which I'm actually really happy with these were from Dalston Mills so I ordered two meters of a brush cotton flannel fabric which is fab I'll get at least one shirt maybe I'll get a blouse shirt for John maybe and Maybe it's even a small top for myself with that. And I also ordered two metres of another brush cotton flannel fabric in this fabulous autumnal orange and navy. I know it's not autumn, but uh, we love autumn in this house. And I ordered a metre of Rami linen in a, that's a better colour, in I also got three meters of a taupe colored ditzy print fabric and it's, um, it's a little thinner than poplin I would say it's not a poplin it's got a bit more drape than a poplin um, and it's more like a taupey brown a taupe with a cool brown leaves and little flowers on to make a dress with I also ordered a very Christmassy metre of cotton fabric. It's a thin cotton, kind of a, it's not as thin as lawn and not as heavy as a poplin. But I'm going to make a Christmas top with this for myself. I have no idea what I'm going to make. I don't know if I'm going to make the zero waste blouse, possibly, but I need to check. I need to make a muslin of that and because this is the type of fabric it is it hasn't got a lot of drape um, I'd have to be careful on the type of sleeve style I did with that maybe do a short sleeve version but I plan to make a Christmas blouse to wear on well not just on Christmas but over Christmas with this I also ordered three meters of this fabric cotton fabric now this does seem to have a bit of drape to it um and it has these watercolor flowers all over it i love this it's kind of like a midnight dusky midnight purpley violet background it's not completely black uh with these flowers on and like i said it does seem to have a bit of drape to it um which is really nice 
I have three meters of that and then I ordered a mystery bundle of uh, corduroy fabric eight meters bundle of mixed corduroy so some of them I'm really happy with some of them nah, eh, that's okay this one I really like it is a very drapey fine needle cord fabric let's see if I can get this to show on camera Yeah, it is a very very fine drapey needle cord and the colour it looks quite cool and it is a cool toned fabric but it is a more of a chocolatey brown kind of like what it's showing up over here maybe a little bit darker focus yeah like a chocolatey brown and I am not sure how much of this there is I think there's around two meters we kind of roughly laid it out earlier on to have a look and I will have to fold this off camera because I cannot do this behind the camera there is also a couple of meters of this heavier weight needle cord and this one regular cord rather needle cord this one is a olive green heavier weight fabric which would be fab for I don't know skirt maybe it's definitely heavier than the other one the other one is more of a shirting fabric um, but I will certainly find a use for all of these the third one is a burgundy. I'm really pleased with the bundle they chose. Uh, they could have just picked a random bundle that had, I don't know, pastel pink and blue in it. But obviously had a look at the fabrics I'd already ordered and gathered a bundle that went nicely with them. So where I've ordered, say, burgundy linen and the more muted tones. I got a muted tones corduroy, which is brilliant. Really happy with that. This one... Again, burgundy, very similar colour to the linen that I ordered. Again, it's a bit darker than it's showing on camera. And um, this one is not as stiff as the olive. It's got a bit of drape to it, which is nice. Um, and there's quite a lot. It's quite heavy, this one. There's at least two metres of this anyway, from the feel of it. Really happy. And finally, there is this, which is not so great this is definitely a man-made one and um, it's a stiffer one it will be good to definitely do a test run not a muslin but a first run of making an outerwear garment um, like a jacket like a corduroy jacket there is a few damaged little damage spots on this one unfortunately so I'll have to be careful of my pattern piece placement um, but it is this slightly darker olive green and, and if I can get it to focus it actually has kind of two-tone colour in the weave and like I said, this one it definitely feels man-made fabric so yeah really happy with my order other than this one which I'm not disappointed with but not so bothered about um, but I will definitely make a jacket or something with it um, even if it's just for uh, sort of in the garden what have you but everything else thoroughly pleased with I have just noticed a slice in this bag which means I think the fabric was perfectly fine the one that I said was a little damaged because it was on the bottom and this is the bottom of the bag like the back of the bag where the fabric would have been and there is a, a proper slice in here so I think somebody sliced open something in shipping and um, it has gone through the bag and the fabric well hey ho I'm just glad it was the least important piece of fabric that was in the whole packet that was in that position.